Hey guys, this is gonna be a little bit of a different kind of video. We don't usually talk about uh, homeschooling too much here on our channel, but um, you know, some things have been going on and I've had some thoughts kind of rolling around in my head, so I kind of wanted to share them with you guys today. Uh, you might find yourself suddenly at home and needing to provide some sort of education for your kids. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today especially elementary and middle school age kids. Um, we do plan on homeschooling through high school and you definitely can do that. We just haven't entered that kind of territory yet. Uh, our oldest is going to be a freshman next year. So we're still in the elementary, middle school ages and grades right now. So that's what I know best. Um, so I just kind of wanted to share some thoughts with you guys if you find yourself in that situation of needing to um, homeschool for a t on a temporary basis. So first of all, I just want to say, I know the idea of homeschooling your kids can be overwhelming, especially if you're not used to it, especially if you haven't done it before. Don't overwhelm yourself with trying to find a curriculum for your kids, especially in the temporary uh, two, three months uh, area that you have the rest of this school year. Um, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Most likely, if you have your kids in public school already, you're going to have some sort of an idea of what they're learning, where they're at, and maybe the school will give that to you or you've just picked it up from you know going over their homework with them, helping them with different things. Um, so I wouldn't worry about starting a curriculum at this point. From what I've seen on the news, these school closures that are going on are going to last a few weeks. Um, it's March now, so maybe two to three months at the very most because summer is going to come up. So what you want to focus on is getting them through those, those few weeks or those few months. Um, it's not going to be a whole lot. It's going to go by fast. You are a parent first and your kids need to see you uh, embracing this time with them, not being stressed out or worrying about um, what you're going to do with these kids that are on your hands now. Um, this is such an opportunity for you guys to embrace having your kids home and getting to know them on a much deeper level, um, getting to see what interests them and what they're passionate about, and being able to uh, teach them at home is a really big blessing in my opinion. Yes, it can be trying sometimes, but um, overall I think the blessings definitely outweigh the, um, the negative things. I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible. Um, if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. I love talking about this stuff, so um, I'm really open to any type of questions that you guys have about us personally or about anything that I talk about here, um, any kind of curriculums or things that we use. If you're just doing this temporarily, I wouldn't worry about creating a, say, 8 to 4 schedule. That's going to really, really stress you guys out. Um, you and your kids and just make it not fun these few weeks that you have them at home with you You know focus on making it fun making it light and um, Getting to know your kids uh, I, Being at school all day. I can imagine um, is hard and They especially in times like these they want to be comforted. They need that comfort and they just need you so um, I wouldn't worry too much about implementing a strict um, public school replication. Alright, so the second point I want to make is that you can homeschool for very little money. Um, especially if your kids are in the elementary or middle school uh, grades. And remember, this is a temporary thing for some of you. Um, you aren't going to need to go out and buy a whole bunch of books, a whole bunch of um, activities or, or projects or things like that. This is just to get you guys um, to summer, basically. And the third point I want to make is I know that this is kind of a daunting thing to have your kids home and suddenly be in charge of their education when you've been trusting someone else to do it, especially someone that has a teaching degree. Um, you might think you're not cut out for it or you're not um, able to do it, but you are. You know your kids the best. You know what makes your kids tick. You know what they love and you know how they respond best to, to you. What you're about to do is something that generations of people have done since the beginning of time. Some of the greatest minds of all time were homeschooled and what an amazing opportunity to be able to share 
time with your kids and be able to uh, learn together and make memories. Okay, so we are required to teach reading, language arts, math, science, uh, and social studies. Your state might be a little different in their requirements. Um, one website that I highly recommend is the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. It's hslda.org and they list every single state's uh, regulations. They list um, free resources for you and um, advice. Um, uh, lots and lots of information on that website. I would highly recommend that you go to that. Um, even before you start anything, before you start any kind of program or anything. Um, they know what they're talking about. They have researched this all. They have lawyers to, to help you out. Um, it's just a really great website and it's free. So we started an online math course this year um, from ctcmath.com. And what I really like about it is that it keeps track of everything. It gives the kids their lessons and it keeps track of their grades, their scoring. Um, and it helps them progress to the next level. So they have a video to watch and then they have questions. So they can redo any of those videos anytime, redo any of the questions anytime, and it keeps their scores locked in. They will compute everything for me. I don't have to do anything at all, which is wonderful because I have four kids doing it right now. Eventually I'll have seven, and it just really helps me um, with peace of mind knowing that they will take care of everything for me. Um, I think they have a one month subscription which is $29.95 for one month for one child and then you can get a family membership too that's $39 I think for the whole family. My seven year old all the way up to 14 use it and they really like it a lot. We also have used uh, workbooks. If you are more of a workbook person, these are super cheap on Amazon. You can get them for I think up to 6th or 7th grade. Um, and they are really good for reviewing. They're really short lessons, but um, they are really good for reviews and kind of building on new skills. Um, they're super easy and light and fun. It's just basic um, math stuff. You can get more specified um, areas of math, and they're like $3, I think, on Amazon, and they're prime, so you can get them in a couple of days. This one I found at Target in the dollar spot a while back. And it's just uh, kind of a mix of all the subjects, actually. Um, every day they would do like one page or something. It's just a fun little thing. But guys, there's so much more that you can do to teach math without textbooks. You know, baking and cooking, measuring, uh, multiplying and dividing fractions, um, make brownies, make pancakes. Let them help you make meals, learning how to use a tape measure or um, a yardstick, building projects around your home, you know, making a grocery list, how much is your budget, and then looking at circulars to see what you want to buy, what can fit into your budget, um, figure out how much things cost per pound or per ounce, and figuring out the cost of each item and adding tax, all those things are math. You know, making change, give them some, uh, let them count the, the change in your wallet or um, you know, if you give your kids an allowance, give them a bank register and have them keep track of how much is coming in and how much is going out. That's real life stuff that they're going to need anyway. When you fill up your gas tank, let them calculate how many gallons need to go in your gas tank, how much per gallon, um, the total cost of what you spent, um, subtract it from your budget. That's all math. I remember my dad uh, in the car teaching my sister and I about mile markers as we were going down the highway. You know, we knew what mile marker we were on and then when we were traveling, he would tell us, you know, where, how many miles until we can get home or how many miles until uh, our turn off, you know, and it was just a fun little game. You know, all this might sound simple and maybe so simple that it can't be real learning, can't be real education, but let me ask you this. So How being many able times to kind of week, shift you your perspective of what theorem? learning you is, remember what is that is. Really I had to look it up to remember what get it is. Through this. But I remember learning about it in school. Hasn't served me at all in all those years. I won't say how many, but all those years since I graduated high school, I've not used that once. But I use this kind of math all the time, and your kids will too. And I guarantee you it's way more fun than learning from a textbook. So being able to kind of shift your perspective of what 
learning is, is going to really help you get through this. Um, you use math every day without a textbook. And if you really need to know something, I bet that you use a calculator or you ask Siri like I do. You know, for younger kids, I would, um, you know, find some little, little pieces here. Like we got, see, we got these little erasers and they're all different kinds. And I play games with Judah all the time with these. Um, I'll make patterns for him and he'll have to figure out what comes next. Or um, we'll do little graphing exercises. We use these a lot um, when we're playing like tic-tac-toe or something. And so there's so many ways that these little things can come in handy. Or, um, you know, use Lego guys or little army men or little dolls or whatever you have in your house. You can use them. You can utilize them in math. You know, play Yahtzee, play Monopoly. Those are all good um, counting skill games. You know, those you're having fun, but you're learning too. One of the games that we like to play to help with math skills is called Kaboom. And the way it's played is that you have all these popsicle sticks and they all have two numbers written on them. So if you're doing multiplication, you would do, like this one is two and nine, you would do two times nine, um, or addition would be two plus nine. If you get it right, you get to keep the stick. But eventually you're gonna get one that says Kaboom. And that means you have to put all of your sticks that you've accumulated back. Um, it's a really fun game because you're trying to get the most sticks or more than everybody else and it's totally random which ones you get, especially if your uh, sticks are not colored like mine are. Um, just regular popsicle sticks and a permanent marker, that's all you need. Card games, uh, there's Go Fish, there's um, matching games, there's all kinds of card games that you can play. Um, Pinterest is a really, really good place for ideas. Um, it's where I get a lot of mine. I made a lot of games myself um, just because that's what we like to do. We like to play games for math and especially my youngest. Um, he really is competitive and so that helps a lot um, to get him in the mood for math. They're really cheap flashcards you could get. These are really good for practicing money. There's, I mean, you know, there's also addition and subtraction and all that. Um, money is a really great math tool to use. Have a grocery store from the food in your pantry or an animal shop with their stuffed animals or their little toys. It's actually a really good way to teach math because it engages them a lot and they have a lot of fun with it so they're going to remember things more. You always remember things more when you are interested in them or when you are having fun. Um, some other things you can do, uh, you know, sort blocks into colors or patterns. Uh, let them measure water in the, in the bathtub with some measuring cups. You know, anything can be a game if you use your imagination. Language arts. And I'm going to include reading in this because I read so much. It's just pretty much included in all of our subjects. If your kids are like mine and they love reading, I would let them check out as many books as they want to from the library. Um, Nonfiction, fiction, picture books, anything across the board. I would let them um, check out whatever books they want. Um, you know, use your discretion, but we just went to the library today and filled up bags of books because I know we're not going to go back for a while and graciously our library has said, you know, we're not charging for overdue fees, we're not, um, we're not making you bring your books back, there's no uh, time limit. Um, we are encouraging parents to read to their kids and, and snuggle up with books and so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, your, your library might be enacting some of the same um, things as ours, so you guys should look into that definitely. I know ours is canceling all their educational programs and things like that for the time being, but they are still open and they're still uh, letting you check out books. My kids will read all day long if I let them, and I like to read to them too. It's kind of a fun family thing that we do, and it's a really good bonding thing. Um, I will read in the evenings while they play Legos or draw or just play toys. Um, Sometimes they'll be reading their own books while I'm reading and I think they aren't listening. But if I stop, they'll ask me to start, they'll ask me to keep going. So I always like to read to them. I've done it since they were little and it's just kind of a normal thing for us. Um, and don't, don't feel like it's a weird thing if you're not used to that. I guarantee you that they will love hearing stories from you. Um, Audible has so many amazing books. We've listened to all of the Harry Potter series, the Narnia series. 
Um, those are all really great stories and they are hours and hours and hours of entertainment. Um, you know, we listen to them in the car, we listen to them while we're eating breakfast or lunch and my kids absolutely eat them up. As far as the language arts side, I try to focus on um, spelling and handwriting the most. We don't do a lot of grammar um, just because I don't feel like in the earlier years they really need a whole lot of that. We've done the basic stuff, nouns, pronouns, um, similes, metaphors, all that kind of stuff, but um, the deeper level stuff they'll get into in high school, so I'm not really worried about it right now. Um, I do like a certain spelling curriculum a lot. This one's kind of beat up, but it's spelling workout, and all three of my older kids use it a lot, and it's really cool because um, they will give a history lesson or a science lesson at the beginning of each uh, spelling lesson. And so um, they'll use all the words for that lesson. And then there's a couple of pages of work. And then we'll do a spelling test on Friday. And that's it. You can, uh, especially on a short term, you can totally make up your own. You know, take words out of books that you're reading and have them find definitions for them in the dictionary or online. Um, you know, make a crossword puzzle or have them find those words in a magazine. Use flashcards or matching games to kind of help them to remember those words. Help them write it out in their best handwriting or cursive if they're learning that. So for my first grader who is more of a reluctant, um, who's more reluctant to start reading, um, we're still kind of in that phase of phonics and um, beginning sounds and learning uh, what all the letters say. We play a lot of games to help him with that. Um, that's what he, that's how he learns best. He's pretty competitive and he likes going up against me um, playing these games. And so, so I have one of these for him. Um, it's a composition book, but it's for the primary ages. So they have um, these kind of lines that help them with their handwriting. I'll, we'll practice the letter sounds and then we'll do uh, some handwriting with those words. We'll sound out words and we'll write them or we'll do some matching things in there. We play a lot of games that uh, I've just made up. Sight word bingo. Um, so we'll do match the word. We have these cards with an actual word on them. We'll put it right here and then he'll find the letters in these banana and match it right here. Um, and sometimes he likes to be timed for that or We'll each have one and we'll try to find the letters before each other. Um, and then, you know, I just made up little, little games just to help them get a little bit of extra help um, in a fun way. We'll roll a dice and see where we land and then think of a word to go with that letter. Pretty simple stuff. So again, there's all kinds of workbooks. These came from Dollar Tree, I think, for a dollar. Um, they actually have a really good school supply section, lots of history and science things. Um, so yeah, basic just, you know, kindergarten, first grade stuff uh, that you can actually, like this one I really like because um, there's actual work involved instead of just writing the letters. And then you can kind of build on that. We play little games with this all. You know, we'll take turns sounding out a word and see who can get the most or something like that. Um, just easy stuff. For the older kids, something that we do every morning is they each have a morning journal and they will pick a book um, and write half a page or a page. They'll just copy that from their book. Um, I let them pick a nonfiction book of their choosing. Um, and then on Fridays, we'll just do a fun book, whatever book they want. And they'll just copy it from here. Um, so that practices handwriting and dictation. Um, and then I will read history while we do that. We don't do uh, really segmented um, studies. We do combined studies. So while they're doing this, I will read from history for that day. And then we just talk about it. Um, we talk about things that we read as they come up. If they have questions, we'll talk about them or, or look at reference books or something else. Um, maybe an internet article or a magazine or something um, to kind of supplement that. So don't think that you have to have a history block and then a math block and then a science block. You can incorporate more than one subject at the same time.
One thing I really like for history that we've been doing is reading this. It's the Yesteryear Gazette. And it's like, a, it's a three page newsletter and it tells all about what happened in history during the month. So they'll have some really interesting things, lots of pictures, and then they'll have, um, they'll have jokes and little puzzles and stuff. And then famous birthdays of the past, they always have three people um, that were born in that month. So this is something that we read about recently, about how they used to mail babies through the mail. It's kind of fun. Um, and then there's like a crossword or something. And we always really like learning about these kind of odd things that happened in the past. Um, a lot of, you know, normal history stuff, uh, big things, wars and things like that. But a lot of it... Um, is maybe stuff that we didn't really know. So it's kind of fun, just a little extra thing. And I will leave some history books that I recommend, some uh, reading books and curriculum type books uh, down at the bottom. We really like this series. If your kids like to read or like history, this is a really amazing series. Um, it's a comic book style, which I know some parents aren't really excited about that. Um, they aren't really into that, but it's completely historical. Um, it just puts a entertaining kind of fun spin on it, but it's all it's all history and it's really neat. Um, there's real people that really lived in here, real events. Um, we have I think five, and I'm not sure how many there are. This one's about uh, World War II. This one is Civil War. This one is about the Grand Canyon. So we have a lot of these like random subject books that um, my kids really like looking through. We found at um, thrift stores or garage sales or on thrift books. Thrift books is a really good place to get books um, for super cheap. And their shipping's not bad either. Uh, it just takes a couple days. It's not Amazon Prime, but it works. So we also use a lot of YouTube for history. There are some specific ones that we really like. Um, Mr. Betts' class is hilarious. He teaches um, topical history studies uh, through memes and songs. So it really gets into your head. Uh, you know, you can learn about the French Revolution through memes and it's really relevant to kids. They love that kind of stuff. Um, and songs that really get into your head. If you've never heard the Constitution sung to Despacito, you will never get it out of your head after this. There's also, you know, you can watch documentaries online. Amazon Prime or Netflix has documentaries that are really great um, for families to watch together. There's, um, you know, you can make crafts. Pinterest has a lot of ideas for history. They're very cheap or free that you can do at home with what you have. And then, so science, same thing. We have these books, lots of natural study books, because that's what my kids like. Um, there's Magic School Bus. This, let's see. We, um, we use these for a couple of our kids. They're critical thinking, a lot of uh, science, sciencey stuff in here. Um, history, you know, math. These are kind of a general thing. There's lots of different subjects in these, but a lot of science. Um, again, science, we use a lot of YouTube for that. Um, the Backyard Scientist and Mark Rober, those are all really great channels for kids because they teach really interesting things um, on a level that everybody can understand it. My seven-year-old can watch it. And understand it I can watch it and still learn something so it's really kind of fun for the whole family and nature walks and um, going out and working in a garden or uh, you know finding toads <laughs> under the porch and learning about them looking them up online and learning about them or um, you know starting seeds those are all science and we don't usually think about those things I think as being science but they are and science encompasses a lot. And it's not just experiments. It's not just um, textbook stuff. There's so much science around us. 
you know, find out how, find out about clouds, go out in your garden, go out in your yard and, and talk about erosion or talk about how seeds grow, you know, do a baking soda and vinegar volcano, talk about volcanoes, talk about the weather. You know, one thing can totally lead into the next, you know, go out, look, in, look at the stars at night, um, talk about the weather, talk about, um, talk about air pollution, whatever you want to talk about, whatever you whatever interests you or interests your kids, follow that path. And it will lead to exploration, it will lead to adventure, and it will it'll be something that um, sticks with them because they, they learned it with you and they had fun doing it. In this temporary zone, you have an opportunity to make memories with your kids, to make their education something better than it's ever been. And so all that to say, don't let this scare you. You can do it. Lots and lots and lots of parents have done this before you, and we've all had the same fears. We've all had the same um, worries that maybe we're not going to do it right, but the best thing that we can do for our kids is to spend time with them and to engage them and to talk to them and to explore what they like, explore what gets them excited, and just to be there for them. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to go out. You can go in your own backyard, your own living room, your own neighborhood, and find all the educational opportunities that you need right now. And I hope that this has kind of at least given you some ideas on how to get started. I want you to enjoy this opportunity that you guys have with your kids and to be able to do something that um, I guarantee your kids will remember for the rest of their lives. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, or you can email me. Our email is in the description. Um, if you guys have uh, if you guys have ideas for other videos like this or specific topics you'd like me to talk about, um, let me know, and I'll try my best to do that too. Um, we're all in this together, and there is a great homeschooling community out there that will answer your questions and give you advice. I think that it's going to be okay, and I hope that you enjoy this this experience with your kids because I sure do um, enjoy homeschooling our kids and I think it's it's a neat thing it's a really great thing to be a part of so thanks for coming along with us guys um, and I'll see you next time